Hi everyone, so welcome back to Bissell's Kitchen and in today we'll be making some jollof rice, some fried plantains, some coleslaw and some honey barbecue jerk chicken thighs. So if you're interested, please keep on watching. Now I'm going to start prepping the stew base of the jollof rice and in a bowl I have about four cloves of garlic, three large onions roughly chopped, seven bell peppers and five scotch bonnet peppers and I didn't want to cut them off too big, too small, just easy enough so it can be easily blended by the blender. So today I'll be using tinned tomatoes. You can use fresh tomatoes but I don't really like using fresh tomatoes because I feel like the color of the jello rice isn't that rich or deep at the end and when you use raw tomatoes you can have that sour bite but if you prefer um, fresh tomatoes then go ahead. In a blender I'm going to add one tin of tomato and a handful of the vegetables that I've chopped and then don't throw away that can. All the remaining tomato, um, plum tomato in the tin I'm going to fill that up with water, mix it around and add it in just to make sure that nothing wastes and also by adding water it makes it easier to blend and I'm going to switch on the blender. If you want to know what blender I have I will link it down in the description box below and check it out. Now, as you can see, that is the last tin of tomatoes and I'm going to add the remaining vegetables. Just repeating the same steps as I did before, I'm going to now blend it and add it to the remaining mixture on the pot on my right. And then I will set it on the stove and I'll see you guys next. Now I've set my stove to high and now I've just gone back in with the blender and added some water so all the remaining vegetables that were left behind can now be incorporated into the pot. I'm going to lightly season and add some salt, some mixed herbs and some curry powder as well. I'm also just want to note that I'm using the Caribbean curry powder, not the Indian one because I feel like the Indian one has a lot of cumin inside and I don't really like it for this recipe but if that's all you have and if that's what you prefer you can as well use that. I'm going to use two Maggi cubes and the reason why I don't want to over salt this or season this is because there's a lot of moisture in the pot and we're going to cook it out and reduce the peppers and if you have too much seasoning at this point when everything reduces it will be a big salty mess and I'm adding one tablespoon of oil and this is just a trick that my mother taught me because there's so much water in the pot when it boils it could overflow so i think that tablespoon of oil prevents this from happening and now i'm just going to mix everything together i'm going to put my lid on and then um, i'm just going to start cooking it let it simmer on high for about let's say 30 minutes and then after 30 minutes i'm going to come back and check on it you can as well add bay leaves into this process but i currently don't have any but bay leaves would be amazing for this process 
So in a bowl, I have some chicken thighs with the skin on. If you don't like the skin, you can remove it if you want. I have some black pepper in there, some salt, some paprika powder, all-purpose seasoning, chicken seasoning, and garlic powder. I've just added a tablespoon of vegetable oil, and I just mix it in together. And I'm going to leave this to marinate in the fridge overnight. So when I cook it the next day, it can be very flavorful. Now, after 30 minutes, it's gotten really really thick but it's not where we want it to be yet and now you want this is the step that you want to be very careful because this part is going to bubble like hot lava like be careful when you lift off the lid because you can burn yourself now after another 30 minutes it's gotten even thicker but it's not where we want it yet so i'm going to pop the lid back on and wait for another 30 minutes and now the sauce is where we want it to be it's thicker. This sounds art amazing. And the consistency is more rich. And now I'm going to pop the lid back on. I'm going to switch off the stove because this is the middle of the night and I'm going to continue the process tomorrow. And now it's the next day and we're going to get ready to fry our stew. So the seasonings we'll be using is some all-purpose seasoning, some curry powder, some maggi Q, some salt, some mixed herbs, some vegetable oil, and I'll be using some chicken stock. This is the ones that I found in Aldi. You can use homemade chicken stock and I even recommend that you do use homemade chicken stock because it's nicer and you can control the flavors. Well, this is what I had with me. And I have some tomato puree and I'm using the Dorica brand because I really like this one. This is the best one and it's flavorful. But if you don't have Dorica, you can use the tomato puree that you will find in Tesco's or Aldi. And lastly, the bowl over there is the tomato sauce that we made last night. Now into the same pot that we used before that has been washed, I'm going to add about five tablespoons of vegetable oil and now that has heated up nicely and I'm going to go in with four heaping tablespoons of tomato puree. It can be as little or as much as you want. I recommend that you go that you use a minimum of three tablespoons but obviously if you like more tomatoes you could use that but just a quick reminder that how much or less tomato puree that you add to your oil, it can be a huge determining factor of the color of your jollof rice at the end. And especially how you cook it. If you cook it too dark and it burns, your jollof rice could have a bitter taste. So now I'm just mixing it around in the oil to cook off that tin taste. And I'm gonna be seasoning with some garlic granules, some mixed herbs. I'm gonna go in with some salt, just like um, two tablespoons of that, some all-purpose seasoning. I'm going to be adding about four Maggi cubes because I don't want to add too much because we're we'll adding the rice and you can always taste for more, but you cannot take it out. And I'm going to mix it up nicely. And as you can see, it's fried and it's going to a rich dark color. And now I'm going to add the tomato and the pepper and the onion base that we made yesterday into the stew and you have to be really really careful with this step because the oil is very hot and you don't want it to burn you this sounds art amazing Using the bowl that we use for the stew base, I'm going to add my chicken stock cube and I'm going to add some hot water and mix all together. I'm using the same bowl because I want all the remaining spices and the vegetables left over to be incorporated into the broth and I'm going to add that back into the pot. Now's the time to use your homemade chicken broth if you have any. If you don't want to use chicken broth, you don't have to, but I don't see why you wouldn't, but if that's not your thing, then it's cool. So the chicken that we marinated overnight, I'm going to add that into an oven proof tray and then put that into the oven for about 30 minutes on 200 degrees. 
Next, I have about six and a half cups of rice and I'm going to wash this nicely and keep on rinsing it until the water runs clear because we want to remove the excess starch from the rice because rice has a lot of starch and we don't want the rice to be too clumpy or mushy. And now I'm going to add the rice into the stew base and make sure all the grains end up into the stew and I don't want to leave any grain behind. It's a really hard process to do but just try your best to get all the grains out. And I'm going to stir that together and now I'm going to start making my coleslaw. I'm using two carrots and a quarter of a cabbage. I'm going to use my grater to grate the um, carrots and then next I'm going to be using my potato peeler and I'm going to use it to peel the cabbage. This is a really easy step to peel the cabbage and I got this stuff from Terry Ann's kitchen but you could use a knife if you want to or you could use a grater as well but if you want to use a peeler make sure it's metal because if you use a plastic one it's going to be really hard to do. I'm going to go in with some Hellman's mayonnaise and I'm going to add some seasoning to this some salt and some pepper you can add paprika if you want to but i just like to keep it simple because the mayonnaise is already flavorful for the coleslaw then i'm going to go in with one teaspoon of honey i like to add honey you could add sugar if you want to but i like the honey flavor because it makes it really sweet and creamy i don't know it's just something about the honey and coleslaw and that mayonnaise combination that's just amazing and I'm going to mix that together and set that aside in the fridge. Now I'm going in with a glaze. So after 30 minutes, I'm going to apply the glaze on top. So I went in with two teaspoons of honey and two tablespoons of barbecue sauce. And I'm going to put that all over the chicken. I just want to know, just want to leave a note that if you're using a pastry brush, I recommend that you use the plastic kind or the rubber kind because the hairs on this brush get everywhere like it drives me insane so i recommend that you use the other brand now i'm going to put that back in the oven for five minutes so the um sauce can kind of crisp up all over the chicken i'm now going to steam my rice and i've applied some tin foil over it you could use some cling film if you don't have any but i really do recommend that you have temple because it really leaves the rice all nice and fluffy and now this is the finished result nice and fluffy next i'm going to fry my plantains and i'm using ripened plantains so you know it's going to be very sweet and very crispy and this is what it looks like at the end and this is the finished plate. I just want to say thank you so much for watching. I appreciate all of you guys. And please follow me on Instagram. Like, comment, subscribe. Turn on your post notifications. And goodbye.